This is part seven of our focus on Ephesians 6, 14 to 17, and we are walking through step by step each of these six pieces of armor to protect us against, remember, all these supernatural powers in verses in verse 12. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, authorities, cosmic powers of this present darkness against spiritual forces of evil. In other words, all the satanic methods and designs is what lies behind all of our adversaries, and we are being given strategies here to stand in the evil day, strong, alive, permanent, saved, with God forever. So, number uh, four. Let's, let's read them all first. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with readiness of the gospel of peace. And now we come to, in all things, sometimes translated in all circumstances, but it's just a very general word, in all things, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. So this is the the one piece of armor here that relates directly back to verse 12, the devil. Father, as we try to understand how to use the shield of faith and what faith is and how the shield works and what these flaming arrows are and what it will mean to, to extinguish them or quench them, oh, give us insight and grant that our arms would be strong to lift this in the strength that you supply so that all of us would not be struck in any destructive way with the flaming arrows of the evil one. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So just to comment on what I think all things refers to here, I think he's saying, in all of your uses of truth, in all of your pursuit of righteousness, in all of your gospel telling, in all of your ponderings and thinkings and applications of salvation, in all your wielding of the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, in all of those things, take the shield of faith. Let faith be in all of them. Don't think that faith is somehow abstracted from these. It is in all of these. Be a believer, be a strong confident person in what God has done for you. Might be good to rehearse from the book of Ephesians just what faith lays hold of. Let's just do a little reminder here. Chapter 1, 13, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and you believed Having heard that, you believed in him. So the Christ who saves you, the Christ who brings good news to you, you believe him, and you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of your inheritance. And so you believe that he has guaranteed your inheritance by the Holy Spirit. And what is that? Chapter 2, verse 7, in the coming ages, he will show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. That's the inheritance that's coming, immeasurable. They cannot be measured because they're infinite and will take ages upon ages to lavish upon us. Faith believes that. And when the fiery dart comes, we believe that. Or chapter 2, verse 8, another word on faith. For by grace you have been saved through faith, This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. God has granted the gift of faith, and we are saved. We're saved from the evil one. We're saved from destruction. Chapter 1, verse 19, I pray you might know what is the immeasurable greatness of his power, immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe. So when we believe, we believe that God is exerting great power toward us according to the working of his great might, 
that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So resurrection power is at work in us when we engage in warfare against the evil one. Faith lays hold of that, believes that. Chapter 3, verse 17, I pray that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. If we believe Christ, he's in us. The omnipotent second person of the Trinity takes up residence in our hearts so that we have confidence that when the flaming dart is shot at us, it's being shot at the house of Christ. We can trust Christ to help us. Chapter 3, verse 12. I meant to write in here. In Christ, we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. Boldness, access to God. (laughs) Satan ought to tremble before us because because of Christ, we have access to God to call down all his help upon us. Now, let's ask this question. In all things, taking up the shield of faith, with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, what are those arrows? Let me just mention some possibilities. One arrow might be you win the lottery. Another arrow might be you write a book and become very, very famous. Another arrow might be bankruptcy. Another arrow might be terminal cancer. Another arrow might be ruined by slander. And you might think, well, that's odd. You mentioned some very positive things and some very negative things. Indeed, I did, because the deceits and devices of Satan are many. Here's what all of those suggestions have in common. They all have in common that if they are from the evil one, they are coming with lies, deceit. So if you win the lottery, Satan is whispering, you don't need God. If he makes you famous, He'll whisper, the praise of man is better than the praise of God. If you go bankrupt, Satan will whisper, God can't provide for you, doesn't even care. If you get terminal cancer, he'll whisper, God's punishing you. Your your sins aren't covered by the blood of Jesus. He's punishing you. If you're ruined by slander and you, you, you lose your job, he'll whisper, God's not able to control the tongues of evil people. You see what I mean? It doesn't really matter whether good things happen to you or bad things happen to you. Satan always has a design. They're always flaming for your destruction. They are aimed to destroy your hope, your confidence, your faith. And the shield of faith, some commentators say, that it was covered with it was metal, but covered with wet leather so that when flaming arrows hit it, the wetness extinguished them. Whether that's the case or not, you get the picture here. Flaming arrows are meant to destroy you, penetrate to you, and destroy you. Well, winning the lottery can't destroy you. Becoming famous can't destroy you. Bankruptcy can't destroy you. Terminal cancer can't destroy you, and being ruined by slander can't destroy you, but all the lies of the devil accompanying those things can destroy you if you believe them, if you believe them. And wielding the shield of faith is saying, I do not believe what Satan is saying in these things. Let me give you a few illustrations of how this actually works. So here we are back in Ephesians 4. Be angry and do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger and don't give opportunity to the devil. And we've seen this before, but look at it again. Give opportunity to the devil means don't let the flaming arrow lodge. How would you let it lodge? By going to bed angry and vengeful. Night after night, seething with what wrong somebody has done to you. 
So how does faith conquer that? Here's one way. Faith believes this. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. Leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. That's a promise. You believe. Faith believes this promise. Faith says, look, whether the adversary who has ruined my life and done horrible things to me is destroyed in hell or his sin is destroyed on the cross and he repents and becomes my brother or sister, that's up to God. But I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it to God. Oh, what a relief. And you go to bed at night not seething. And in that way, you don't give opportunity to the devil. That is, you don't let his fiery dart lodge. You catch it in the shield of trust, faith in God's justice. Here's another example. What about the temptation to the sin of greed or the love of money? That Satan shoots at us. Keep your life free from the love of money. Be content with what you have, and here's how you do it. He has said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So we can confidently, believingly say, the Lord is my helper. I won't fear. What can man do to me? The answer is, believe. Believe the promise, right? Do you believe this? I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. The Lord is my helper. I don't need to be afraid. That frees me from the love of money and quenches the fiery dart of greed. One more illustration. What about pride? Satan, oh, how he wants us to be boastful. Let no one boast in men. So how do you kill boasting? Boasting in yourself or boasting in your tribe or boasting in your ethnicity or boasting in your church? or boasting in your pastor, or boasting, boasting, boasting in men. How do you kill that? All things are yours. Here's the ground. You don't boast because all things are yours. (laughs) What an argument. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all are yours and you are Christ and Christ is God. Do you believe this? That's the issue. That's how you quench the fiery dart of boasting. So, in all things, take up the shield of faith. That is, believe the true promise of God so that when the lying, deceitful, flaming arrow of greed or lust or pride or revenge land in your shield, it will be quenched and will not make it to your heart and ruin your life and destroy your hope. This is a great weapon.